What's up guys? Today we are talking about gloves, US Army issue type. These are essentially all the gloves the US Army has issued over the last two decades. And since you guys have been interested in the military surplus stuff, I figured I would go ahead and show you what all I've been given by the Army. So stick around. Well, here's the spread of basically every glove the Army has issued in the last two decades, uh, minus two things. One of them because I was never issued, and the other because I don't know where the hell it is. But I have a part of it, we're gonna be able to talk about it. So keep in mind, this is all central issue facility items, CIF. This is your basic issue stuff that you get from the actual Army clothing issue facilities. Some of them are what we call rapid field issue RFIs. You get that right before you deploy or depending on your MOS and what you're doing down range and how good your supply system is, that's what you'll get while you're already deployed. So I know if you go to a military clothing sales, you can buy all kinds of cool guy gloves. And if you have a really good supply dude and you're in a good unit, you can get all kinds of extra stuff given to you as well. I have a few of those items here, but for the most part, these are all official army issue gloves. Okay, so first up, in 2003 when I came in, we were given these leather work gloves. And you can still find them at military surplus stores, military clothing stores. Those had many uses, um, but these were the liners that went with them. So they're just basic wool glove liners. I think they cost like two bucks at a military clothing store. Uh, you could probably get them on Amazon or something for really cheap. So essentially in the winter, you know, it's pretty basic. You just put these on, throw your leather work gloves on over them, and that was your winter glove system. And not very waterproof, not very comfortable, no dexterity. So of course the Army started improving them. These were the dress gloves that I got in basic. They were too small, like half the shit I got in basic not warm at all no dexterity they were basically just to keep you from putting your hands in your pocket when in your dress uniforms so these are the first issue gloves that i got for a deployment these are your nomex flyers flame resistant gloves we just call them nomex gloves that's what basically everybody in the army called them we got these as a rfi prior to deploying to iraq and so what a lot of guys would do is they would either cut this off or just roll it up like this because in Iraq it's hot as hell and we're not as exposed to flames as pilots possibly could be. So there you go. A lot of guys just cut them off to here and you get a little, little airflow up your sleeves. These are awesome gloves. I still use these for starting fires, handling hot things, bushcraft style stuff. So these are flame resistant up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. And it also has the item number. You can get these for, I've seen as low as 12 bucks on Amazon, but be careful not to get the cheap Chinese knockoff versions because they are not rated to that temperature. They will fall apart and they're junk. As always with military surplus gear, if it doesn't have an NSN, a NATO stock number, it's not military issue. So another thing just to throw this out, my first time in Iraq in 03, a lot of guys started wearing these basic weightlifting gloves. Kind of to be cool guys, because the SF dudes were wearing them. That's what the infantry does, they copy SF. So you do have a lot more dexterity because your fingers are exposed. Your trigger finger is obviously out, so you can still shoot. The problem with these is in Iraq, when it's 120 degrees on metal, you still can't grab anything because you're gonna burn your fingertips off. That's what these are useful for. Another thing, as soon as you go to pat down an Iraqi dude who's dirty as hell, your fingers, the things you eat with and do stuff with, are contaminated badly. So I never wore these, some cool guys did, and then they learned why it was kind of silly. These are the first pair of winter gloves that I got. I got them in 2003, Baumholder, Germany, when I first showed up to my first duty station as a grunt. They are Nomex, winter flyers gloves or intermediate cold flyers gloves 
So they're kind of comfortable, but as usual, no dexterity. You're not unzipping or unbuttoning and buttoning things with these. They do have leather tips, so that's pretty cool. My problem with these was up here. As soon as this stuff gets wet, which it will in the field, your hands will freeze, and that sucked. So these gloves were, in my opinion, pretty crappy, shouldn't stay in them. One item I'm missing is the next generation after these. But they replaced these gloves. So this was the first pair of winter gloves I personally bought from clothing sales, and I just wanted to show you guys. Look how old these are. I got these in 2004, and those big black gloves I showed you that replaced these, these tiny little things were warmer than those, and I had plenty of dexterity. I could even button and unbutton my BDU pockets very easily. They're still somewhat warm, but they're torn up, so I don't really wear them that much anymore. These have been a multiple field rotations. All the deployments I've been on, excellent gloves. I don't even know if this company is still around. I doubt it. Moving on to around 2005-2006 era, this was my next RFI pair of gloves. These are combat leather gloves and they are flame resistant. I never got the temperature rating off of them though. I actually wore these in Ramadi, you can tell. This is what they look like new. <laughs> so these have been severely worn. A full year in Ramadi, Iraq, actual combat. There's been blood on them. I've handled dead bodies with them. There's been all kinds of shit on these gloves and they are still excellent. I still wear these to do basic work around the house, cutting grass and all that. And as I said with the military giveaway, I have a pair that is brand new that I just got for another RFI that I will never use, have, don't need them. So stay tuned because in the near future, you guys will get a chance to win these. These were your latest improved winter gloves. A lot thinner than these, but a lot of improvements. So they got leather out here on the outside. This stuff can still get wet, but they have a Gore-Tex liner now. That was the improvement. So these are a lot more water resistant. And you see this cinching strap? That is what I meant on the old Army work gloves. You had the same cinching system. So the difference with these is they are not flame resistant, okay? But overall, I actually use these for winter camping these days. Very comfortable, pretty warm, but with most military winter stuff, they're designed for you to be moving. So you're not gonna be sitting in an OP all night wearing just these and be warm. Otherwise, great dexterity, very durable. These have been to Afghanistan with me and they're still in excellent shape. So as I said, I was missing two items. The second item is the extreme cold weather mittens, which had a wool liner, I believe. Even though I was an infantry guy in Baumholder, Germany, I was not issued those. It was usually guys stationed in Alaska or other very cold places that got issued those gloves. I do have a pair of them though. I bought them on Amazon for I think 20 bucks with the liners. So they're awesome mittens. They're extremely durable. They're, you know, good old giant bulky RV surplus items, but they're extremely warm. So I don't have them here. I have them in my cabin in California. Maybe I'll talk about them in another video. So the last item are the MBC gloves, your nuclear biological chemical gloves. As you can see, I haven't even opened these. I never plan to. I got these as RFI issue going to Iraq my first time. And we had to keep them on us just like we had to keep our suits on us and actually wear half of it. They warned you not for electricity or fire, duh. But they have a little liner in them. And really these are just the gloves that go with what we call the mop suit. And um, you know, in a chemical attack, you gotta have these on you or everything you touch contaminates your hands. But again, never used them, just kept them around for whatever. I might give these away in a military surplus, so if anybody's interested, hit me up in the comments below, and uh, maybe I'll hook you up. So not to forget about cool stuff your supply sergeant can order for you if your unit doesn't suck. It takes the army so long to issue you something, especially when you really need it, and most units who are deploying have the priority, so guys like me who's been all over the place, multiple deployments, 
I got stockpiles of stuff. But for the average Joe in a unit that just needs a new pair of gloves or an updated pair of gloves, he can go to the supply sergeant and get some good stuff issued to him. These can be purchased on the economy, but certain gloves like this, as long as they fit AR670-1, our uniform standards, the Army will allow supply chains to order them. And this is another pair that I'm giving away during the military surplus giveaway. So guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a big thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell so you get the notifications. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about this video and maybe what else you might wanna see from the military surplus world. If you're new to this series, I've been issued tons of stuff by the Army in the last 18 years. I'm starting to go through it to turn it in for retirement and a lot of it fell off the books. So I'm gonna start doing giveaways. I'm gonna start doing more videos on this stuff. And best of all, I'm gonna show you guys not only what we have, but how we usually use it in the Army. As always, thanks for the support, guys. Appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video.